My name is Brian Owak. I go by KGB Glass, and I am a glass artist out of Portland, Maine. For the past around four years, I've made solely donut pieces. I grew up right around Syracuse, New York. Um, lived there for the first 18 years of my life. No real art background, um, no college. Um, yeah. glass blowing kind of randomly. Um, it was around 14, 15 years ago. Probably, yeah, 15, maybe even 16 years ago. Um, I met some friends of friends on Fish Lot, and they were glass artists out of Vermont. And, you know, we kind of clicked, and we were, you know, hanging out at shows and stuff. And then um, in downtime, I would just go and visit and watch them blow glass. And that was just amazed by it and never saw myself personally doing it. I just just really liked being around it and watching it. It was just really amazing to me. And then, you know, a few years later, one of those guys moved up to Maine and we linked up and kind of worked it out. So he would show me some things and he could blow glass in my spot in my in this garage. So that's what, you know, got the ball rolling. And, you know, from the second I started mounting stuff, I was like, this is it. my inspiration is like uh, like real donuts around the world like I, I look at a lot of real donuts on the internet uh, whenever I travel I like to check out different donut shops and bakeries and just look at different drizzles and like feeling out what people are doing um, that's like the inspiration but like you know like motivation like inspiration like why I do it I mean I love what I do and it's definitely like uh, passion but it's also like my job where um, you know this is how I pay my bills this is how I put food in my stomach you know so it is a job you know but at the same time it's like one of the most amazing jobs I can dream of because I'm doing you know something that I personally love and don't mind putting in seven hour days ten hour twelve hour days uh, you know seven days a week it's like it's really great kind of dates back to me being a baker at Dunkin' Donuts and uh, some, a uh, few other smaller bakeries. But I know I worked the overnight shift and kind of doing my thing and I was like, there should be a donut pipe, you know? And there wasn't one. 
and I just uh, I didn't have the skills at the time to really make it. I didn't I didn't know the techniques to make uh, a visually appealing donut pipe. And then around 2007, 2008, um, I did the first one. And then from there, you know, each year um, I tried to make it better and cleaner and more realistic. Um, and I'm, I've been really happy with the progression of the demo. I like pipes. I use pipes. Honestly, like, I've been making pipes, you know, since I was like, high school. You know, like, I remember, you know, I, I, it might have been middle school, but I, <laughs> I remember, like, you know, early years making pipes out of, like, wood and like this and that and just like seeing the weirdest pipes we could make out of whatever was around and like how intricate we could make them and like sometimes I reflect and I'm like if like ninth grade me knew that like someday I'd be making like pipes out of glass that were like much nicer than like these like wooden weird things that I was making like I don't even know what I would think like I probably wouldn't even believe myself but uh it's just it's crazy to think back like you know, I was doing it just because I wanted to, and I was like, wow, like, let's make something cool to smoke out of, you know? It, it adds to the ceremony, ceremonial aspect of smoking, and I think, you know, I've always, like, kind of cherished the pipes I smoked out of, and, you know, it's really great to be a part of that circle with so many different people around the world at this point, you know, that I can create something that's going to be special to their ceremony and, like, mean something when they're, like, using it and, you know, raising their consciousness. You know, it was a different time, you know, I was always, I was always, you know, trying to keep it as underground as I could and not really telling a lot of people about it and I, you know, I was always kind of felt like I was doing something a little wrong even though it's just, you know, essentially just making odd functional art. But it was a little weird and then once the whole Operation Pipe Dreams hit, you know, I was just kind of getting the ball rolling and like really digging it and then that hits and I'm, you know, kind of threw me for a loop and Shop owners kind of like took a step back a little bit and like we're waiting to see what happens. But, um, you know, I was like, I'm not stopping. You know, I, I see what's happening, but, you know, that's not really enough to stop me from doing, from trying to, you know, pursue this new career that I love. And I mean, even at that time, I was still working six days a week making donuts from seven at night till, you know, five in the morning. But come like six, seven in the morning, I'd fire up the kiln and go start learning, you know, whatever te techniques I could. And um, I did that for years before, you know, moving on to just solely glass. Right around that time is where the whole KGB came from, because when I was making pipes, I would sign a KGB, but when I made, like, there's a few donuts out there, I would sign with my real name, and um, that was just paperweights. So, like, donut paperweights, non-pipes, um, I'd sign my real name, and then the pipes, I would sign KGB. Just because, you know, it was just a little weird. I didn't really want to, I didn't know where the laws and, and all this like prosecuting would really go. So I didn't want to stop. So KGB was like an old nickname of mine that um, I applied to this. And now, you know, 15 years later, it's still, still stuck and still doing it.
Yeah, making pipes uh, has changed my life just for the better. Um, I remember when I first got into it, you know, I was just, I was like, I was, uh, I didn't, I was happy and I was getting by, but I didn't really have like a passion to put everything into. And like, I was just kind of scattered and didn't really know, you know, where I would be in five, 10, 20 years. And I, was, I liked making donuts and I was doing it, but like pipes, something just clicked. And you know, all the, all the kind of bullshit that was in life and like the ups and downs and you know, it just kind of went away. And then pipes were there and like, I don't know, I'd go into work and it was just almost like this zen therapy thing where making pipes was its own little world. And uh, just the idea of, just a notion of saying, well, maybe someday I can do this for a living. Like this would be all, this is all I would do. You know, I, I, I didn't know if that would ever actually happen, but it was just the new goal. Uh, making pipes, um, you know, gave me an outlet for a lot of like energy that I had. And, some people with a lot of energy kind of don't know how to direct it. And you know, sometimes that can be your downfall, you know? Um, but I was able just to focus on glass and just creating stuff and like the whole cycle of like selling it and people using it, appreciating it. And like, it was all, you know, it's all just been really, really great. job like this isn't really much of a hobby anymore and that I feel like quality went up and like the range of what I was making would go up as far as the diversity and techniques and styles it's just I feel like being your own boss is very very tricky and it's not for everyone um, me personally I love to work and it's even better when I love what I'm doing so you know I think it was probably around 2008, 2009. Um, I really kicked things in the year and got more focused on just work ethic and taking it seriously because it was a job as well as a passion. And like, you know, you really got to put it, like, I guess one of the great things about it is you get out what you put in. And I've just put in so much, you know, blood, sweat, and tears into my glass like portfolio and my glass like just glass and um it's finally given back you know after years and that's like kind of advice too of becoming glass blowers like it may be tough you know the first four or five years um you know maybe not but if it is you just i feel like if you keep at it and you're passionate about what you're doing uh it will pay off and like for me now i'm a lot more comfortable now than you know 10 years ago but I feel like I am working probably twice as much and making stuff that's, you know, 10 times nicer. And I think, you know, working more will benefit you just in the quality of your work, you know? Um, but that's me. I know, like, everyone's different. I just, you know, I love to work. Like, I love a rainy day because it's an excuse to, like, you gotta work, you know? Like, sunny days, you might, like, I don't know if I wanna work, it's a sunny day. But, you know, rainy days, I'm like, I'm going to work, this is awesome.
I like pipes. I think that's hands down pipes. I've I've always struggled making non-functional art. You know, uh, I like sometimes I'll look at something and I'll be like, well, but like if I make it, I'll be like, well, what does it do? You know, like I, for some reason that's one of my my flaws. I'm like, it needs to do something. That's why I like um, I, I was just making pipes and the pendant was the first like non-pipe donut that I made, the donut pendant. And that came about just by a collector years ago being like, would you make one that's not a pipe? And I was kind of blown away. I was like, someone wants one of these that's not even a pipe. That's like crazy. Like it doesn't even do it. You're just going to wear it. And they were all about it. And I made one and then word got out. And next thing I know, I'm just flooded with requests for pendants. And I, that to me actually meant a lot because someone was buying something not just because it's a pipe and you're going to smoke out of it, but they were going to wear it and like be proud of it. And like I remember that is to me being a pretty big deal. Like in the evolution of the donut, it was like, wow, like it showed me that it's kind of endless and like anything is possible. And I mean, to this day, I make, these days I make almost just as many pendants as I do pipes because, you know, people, people are really digging them. You know, it just feels so good to like see someone wearing a donut and I'm like, holy cow, like, thanks. You know, like, thank you. It, it's like, it's awesome. So, um, yeah, pipe all the way. But, you know, I respect everything else. But I'm, I definitely consider myself a pipe maker. There's just so many different reasons of, of why certain pieces are my favorite, you know? There's like milestone pieces and then like collab pieces with um, some of the more famous artists from like years ago and it's just, it's, it's almost, I hate to pick one piece over anything else because so many pieces um, have been that special, um, but you know, it's just uh, it's a tough question to answer with like a specific piece. It's like my style has kind of stayed the same and I'm thinking about switching it up a little bit in the, in the next couple months. But I think the main change in my style is just the donuts looking cleaner and like sprinkles looking cleaner and just everything looking more realistic and that's kind of been my my focus for these pieces is having them look real and when i look back over the years at like a 2010 donut 2011 donut and then like one from now and it's just so drastic of difference it's it's really crazy and i forget that that's what they used to look like and i was happy with it and then I see now, and it looks way better, more realistic, and I'm like, wow, there's always room for improvement. There's always a little thing I can do to make it look that much more real. And I feel like that's, that's the direction I'm trying to go, is how can I just keep making these look more and more real.
Get kicked out of school and do shit yourself. <laughs> no, <I'm> seriously. Smoke your dash school. Yeah, I got expelled for, for smoking weed in, in high school, so it's funny that this is where I ended up. You know what I mean? Making a living.